In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at moving our project from Godot 3.0.6 to Godot 3.1.1. I know some of you have already done this, but I think that there are a few specific game-breaking errors you'll encounter if you make that switch blind. So that's what we'll be doing today. All right, hey there, welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about how to update our project from Godot 3.0.6 to Godot 3.1. I know that this is coming kind of late for some of you, but there's a few things that will break when you move your project from 3.0.6 to 3.1. So we're going to address those first, and then tomorrow's video we're going to be addressing uh, changing the game logic to make it just make more sense. Um, there's a few things that I did with the current game logic, and I'll explain them when we get there, that don't really make a ton of sense right now. Now, one thing I do want to say is before you upgrade your project to a new version of a game editor, like Godot or Unity or Unreal or Game Maker Studio, whatever you're using, you don't want to use the current version of the project that you've been messing around with. So, um, all of these that I have in my, my GitHub folder for the Godot Match 3, all of these are from Godot 3.0.6. So I don't want to just take the most recent of these and just straight up open it in Godot 3.1, which is the one that's down here on my taskbar. Uh, instead, what I want to do is I want to copy and then paste a version of it somewhere else. In my case, I pasted it onto my desktop, I think. Uh, yeah, it's right there. And uh, once I paste it onto my desktop, then that's the version I'm going to be opening in 3.1. And if I need to, I can then move that back to where I keep all the other ones. But to make sure that I can always go back, I want to make sure that I'm keeping a fresh copy of it that I'll be making changes on uh, instead of using the copy that I've been working with. So um, to do that, I'm going to go to Import, Browse. Mine is on my desktop, and it's Boosters Part 3, project.godot, and I'm going to import and edit. And when you do that, this is in 3.1, there it is, 3.1.1, it says, uh, project was generated in an older engine version and needs to be converted. Um, do you want to convert it? You will not be able to open the project with the previous version of the engine anymore. So if I go and try to open this with 3.0.6 after I do this, it's, it's not going to open. So that's again another reason why you want to make sure that you have a clean copy. So it's going to re-import the assets here really quickly. And I'm going to hit play and it's going to break. But we're going to find out where that break is and how to fix it. So the first break is here in the move camera function. So some people had been asking me questions about the camera video and I I didn't understand what their problem was and it's it's because those people were using um, Godot 3.1. So if that was you and you asked a question and I didn't know what to do, um, this is why. I Because this is literally today was the first time I tried moving our project to 3.1 versus 3.0.6. So when we set the camera's new position, um, Grid to pixel already sends back a vector two, and Godot 3.0.6 was fine with me casting this uh, as a vector two, but Godot 3.1 is not. So I'm just gonna remove this from move camera. This new position equals grid to pixel. Now, if I hit play, I'm still gonna have an issue, and this comes from the uh, game data manager. So what's going on here is the level that I'm currently using, I'm just using the generic game window. And in here, uh, I think it has its level is zero, wherever level is. That needs to be fixed. Um, I think, is it, is it the top UI that knows that? Or the, whatever, it, it doesn't matter. Um, whatever script it was that was giving me this error, top UI. Uh, if it doesn't know what the level is or if the level's key doesn't exist in the dictionary, it gives an error. So all we have to do to fix that is just add a little check before we try to set the high score. So we want to say if, so if the game data manager dot level info, so we want to check to see if it has, and what we want to check to see if it has is current level, then we're going to 
uh, set the current level's high score. If it doesn't, then we're not going to set that. So that fixes that other issue. All right, cool. So now we can actually play it in 3.1. And if I go back here, okay, cool. The camera resized itself. That's good. Um, so far, so good. But there's a few issues that are going to come up um, outside of those two main ones that break your game right away. Uh, the first one has to do with if you're transporting this to mobile. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to make sure that that actually worked the way I wanted it to. And if I go to play, okay, cool. So the first thing is if we're transporting it to mobile, um, the touch isn't going to work right away like it would have with 3.0.6 because of the way that they changed the touch input. So to do that, we need to go to, oh yeah, we need to fix these PNGs too. We need to go to project, project settings. And then in here, is it, I forget where it is now, um, input devices, I think. So you wanna make sure that you're emulating mouse from touch or touch from mouse and mouse from touch. Um, make sure that both of those are turned on. And then the other thing you wanna do is go to your input map and go to UI touch. Currently UI touch is only for device zero. And in 3.1, the touch screen doesn't count as device zero anymore. So where we have this UI touch here, you're gonna to wanna to go to the little pencil and we wanna change this from device zero to all devices and then click change. Um, let's fix these PNG things. Sometimes Godot will do this when you import uh, assets. It will import the asset, but it'll also import like a shadow version of the asset. I'm honestly not sure why that is. If anybody out there knows, please let me know. Um, so I just wanna go through my art folder over here. So I've got effects, obstacles, there we go. There's a few of them. So these ones with the red X's, I don't wanna do the actual ones, just the ones with the red X's. I'm gonna highlight all of those and delete and remove them from the project. Pieces, do I have any? Nope, UI, nope. And then it looked like there were maybe some sounds that were having some issues. So sounds, music, yep. So the themes need to be deleted, remove, and the sounds need to be deleted, delete, remove. Okay, let's try this now. So if I play the current scene, all right, nice, cool. Now this should also now work if you try to export it to Android. I know I haven't covered that in this tutorial yet, but some of you have moved ahead and encountered that issue. Let's see. Booster info is declared. All right, we'll fix that. Declared. Too many errors, six were dropped. Okay, we'll address these um, not in tomorrow's episode, but in next Wednesday's episode. These are, they're, they're yellow flags because they're not actual errors, but they're things that you want to change. So. We're going to be changing a lot of our logic. Now let's talk about why I want to change the logic. So part of the reason I really like Godot is since you can only have one script on every object, you are forced into trying to make sure that you're not keeping all of the functionality on one God object is what it's called in programming. You don't want one God script that's doing everything. Instead, you wanna have each script have a single responsibility and each function have a single responsibility within that script. So I started out doing that pretty well. However, um, the grid script here in particular is a little stinky. Um, it's a programmer way of saying it's, it's inelegant. Uh, so all that the grid should do is keep track of where the pieces are on the grid what goes where and what's going on. The grid shouldn't probably have a state machine, but I'm okay with it having it since the state machine is pretty limited. Um, it's okay for it to have these, the obstacles, all of this is good, preset board, piece array. There's an argument that the hint stuff shouldn't be here, that we should have a hint manager object or a hint object that manages this, but Honestly, it's it's so small in the logic of the whole grid. I think that's okay. Uh, current pieces swap back. All of this is fine. 
Again, you could make an argument that the touch variables should probably be in a separate object for input, but again, I'm fine with that for now. The score variables though, the grid shouldn't be taking care of scoring. So we should have like a separate object either that just does scoring or a manager object that takes care of that. Same thing with the counter, same thing with the goal check. Uh, well, no, not the goal check is fine actually because this is just sending out a signal telling it what was used. This is fine and then this is fine and then everything else is probably okay. But we're we're doing too much from here and last video when I added this uh, game data manager stuff to the top UI, it doesn't make any sense for that to be in here. Um, the top UI shouldn't it shouldn't need to know what level we're on. We should have a, a separate game manager object for that. That will take care of all of it. That that way our logic isn't spread amongst a few different things. So we're gonna be talking about that next time. This was a quick video to talk about upgrading to 3.1 and discussing where we're going next. So tomorrow's video, we're going to discuss um, adding that game manager object and removing some functionality from the grid so that the grid doesn't control everything. Uh, then next week, we're going to talk about those little yellow flags for things that we're not using and kind of optimizing it. Then after that, we'll get back to doing the boosters. And once we're done with the boosters, we'll talk about exporting to Android and iOS. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. You can follow me on Twitter to find out when I post new videos. Join the Discord, tons of really cool people there. Um, Everybody's super helpful. I've I haven't been there the last five days or so, but uh, even though I've been been gone, people have been getting help. So if you need help, the Discord's a good place to go. Otherwise, uh, I hope everybody out there has themselves a wonderful day.